His Excellency Mr. Jose Rafael Espada, Vice President of Guatemala. Your Excellency, you have the floor. Señora Presidenta, Secretarios de la Mesa, Jefes de Estado, the members of the Bureau, heads of state, distinguished delegates, ladies and gentlemen. We're facing the most important conference in the 21st century. The future of mankind and of our planet are going to be decided. We are aware of the problem. We know what is required. We say that we want to do something. But what's happening? Let's think about this. First of all, bear in mind we are a single race, humanity, a single country, that of the planet Earth. We come from a 20th century with great achievements and great progress but with so, much, so many inconsistencies, two world wars, senseless ideological conflict, and an enormous economic crisis. We've reached the 21st century now, one which has to see change. It has to be the century of what I would call humanism, the spirit of humanism, a human, a humane century. Guatemala associates itself with what has been said by the group of 77 in China. It also appreciates the efforts made to bring about this major conference. Nevertheless, we are facing a crisis of civilization at the global level. And those who must take decisions now are still lost in the branches and the twigs of the problem. We're not tackling the roots. We have to mitigate and cut emissions. It makes no sense to continue with the old development model, producing as we have produced, consuming as we have consumed, and trying to ease our consciences over the damage resulting from our attitude towards our planet. If we want things to be different, we have to do something differently. While we sit discussing things comfortably in this conference hall, in the more vulnerable lands like Guatemala, thousands are facing hunger with scarce prospects of overcoming the consequences of climate change. It can't go on. We all have to display leadership and responsibility. Some countries see the problem of climate change as a voracious form of colonialism, with technology as a, as a, a business and a source of dependency. This is generating even greater division between industrialized countries and developing nations. Given the lack of responsibility of the community of nations in handling the problems of the environment and services and goods of nature, and given the manifest harm from global climate change, Guatemala invokes hereby the United Nations Charter of Economic Rights and Duties of States this specifies that the environmental policies of all states must foster and not adversely affect the present and future development potential of developing countries. Further, it states that all states bear the responsibility to ensure that the activities carried out under their jurisdiction or control shall cause no harm to the environment of other states or zones situated beyond the limits of national jurisdiction." Unquote. Guatemala would appeal to the community of developed nations to now shoulder its responsibility for the activities which are contributing to climate change. That is a moral and legal responsibility. They should live up to their international commitments. 
based on that, we called for adoption of two legally binding agreements. Firstly, the second commitment period under the Kyoto Protocol, and secondly, adoption of the new protocol resulting from the negotiations on long-term cooperative action. Though Guatemala contributes only a tiny, tiny share of global greenhouse gas emissions, is one of the countries most affected on the planet. Guatemala would call for national actions for adaptation and mitigation to the effects of climate change, actions which we will have to take now receive support from the countries which have contributed to this phenomenon and which bear an environmental debt to lands such as our own. That support must be accompanied by fi financial resources in addition to development assistance and it must be accompanied by the appropriate transfer of technology. We cannot continue to use the scientific achievements of the 20th century only for those who can purchase science for the use of narrow interest groups. Science is from all, for all. True science is something which benefits all human beings. And that is the raison d'etre of pure and honest academic research. All human beings bear or enjoy a right to live decently, but not to the detriment of others, rather with the participation of all. We call for precautionary measures to be adopted to foresee, forestall, offset, and or reduce the adverse impact and harm of climate change in accordance with the principles of environmental justice, ecological debt, and natural rights for all. For our part, Guatemala is making major, enormous efforts to strengthen its capacity to meet the challenges associated with climate change. We've implemented policies, laws, acts, and regulations, exhausting our limited resources. But dealing with this problem far exceeds our capacity alone. It will take brilliant creativity, breadth of vision, and steadfast wills, wills, to take on the problems created by climate change together. If we fail to act now, the costs of inactivity will balloon enormously, and perhaps it will prove too late for the most vulnerable populations and communities of the globe. Let us decide now. We have to encourage moral responsibility towards our species, and we have to develop a sense of bioethics which will enable us to coexist with and learn from nature. Guatemala is already taking part in the work of setting up a new mechanism which will enable it to improve the handling of its forests, reducing the emissions resulting from deforestation. We express, we'd like to express our thanks for this opportunity to share our position on the uh, question of climate change at this conference. We'd like to thank uh, Secretary General Ban Ki-moon, the President of the General Assembly, the Government of Denmark, uh, and his Prime Minister, uh, Mr. Ivo de Boer, the Secretary of the UN Framework Convention on Climate Change. Guatemala is the heart of the Maya world uh, and wishes to live at peace with nature. Thank you very much.